Just south of Fremantle in Western Australia, the suburb of Coogee is rapidly transforming from light industrial to housing. This brings with it the opportunity for renewal, like the 118-year-old Coogee Hotel. Untouched and unloved for many years, it's being brought back to life, but now as a restaurant with a serious kitchen garden. Building restoration works are almost complete. But over the last 18 months, a huge amount of work has been put into the garden to ensure that it can provide much of the produce needed for chef Scott Brannigan's seasonal menu. What attracted you to the site? Well, first of all, it's the, the beautiful um, old heritage building behind us. And then it had a, a massive grounds that was old market garden back in the day. And uh, we could see potential in a, in a beautiful garden. Vision is a Mediterranean garden close to the sea, producing lots of food for the restaurant. How many mouths? 200 seater restaurant, so Ooh. we're going to be uh, busy. You sure will. Growing for a 200 seat restaurant on one and a half hectares of land, right on the coast, in sandy soil, on top of limestone, is an ambitious challenge, to say the least. So you're right next to the coast here, Scott. How did you tackle the soil? I mean, there's a lot of limestone under the ground. Yeah, so we pretty much we just scraped up the soil a bit and then we had to bring in some soil conditioner and, uh, and top dress everything with it, which came with its own issues as it was um, kind of introduced soil. So for it to settle down and become a good medium to grow in is, is taking a little while and a bit of a challenge. You're on quite a slope here. How have you dealt with that? Yeah, well, so all the terracing were brought in to, to deal, with the, deal with the slope. It was a very steep property as well. Um, and it sort of fits that Mediterranean sort of theme as well. So we kind of killed two birds with one stone there a little bit. And has it helped with the workability of the site? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I believe it was very steep. So even pushing wheelbarrows around and that was just really tough. So um, the terracing's made it a lot easier. And how about microclimate? I mean, you're so close to the coast here mm. with strong winds. Mm. So we've um, planted olives and, and sort of natural windbreaks with the grapevines and things like that. And we uh, will be adding a little bit of man-made sort of structures like that just to help with the wind and try and keep pushing the wind up and over the terraces. It's obviously working because the place is absolutely pumping. Yeah, thank you. What's been picked from the garden now is supplying another restaurant in Fremantle until the doors open here. The process is all about maximising volume. We might not grow lots of different crops, but we're growing everything in succession so that every couple of weeks we're planting again to get ready, pull out, start again, rotating the crops around, just so we can sustain the restaurant uh, with the volume. It's been, a, been an interesting learning curve, that sort of thing, because it's actually been treated more as a market garden than a backyard garden, I suppose. From week to week, we could pick 100 to 150 kilos of squash and zucchini. I think they picked about 40 kilos of carrots today. Eggplant will be about 20 kilos. Tomatoes about the same. Um, so quite a bit of volume are coming out, and plus all the herbs and lettuces and stuff like that, so yeah. Having the restaurant sit within a garden that has been established well in advance means that the experience of enjoying a meal and knowing the story of where the food came from is there from the moment the doors open. Salvaged mature trees help to bring that feeling to the space. So this is the first tree we planted on the site in 2018. Uh, the fig. Uh, came from a spot in Scarborough that they were just going to knock down. Um, it was going to end up in the trash, pretty much. So we got a tip off about it, and we grabbed it, put it in the ground just before the first rains of 2018, and it's flourishing here. I'm guessing it's probably about 60 years old. Amazing, bit of a retirement home for old fruit trees. That's it, yeah, and they're producing really well. You've got to try one of these. They're beautiful. It's a good size. Yeah, nice and jammy. Oh, it's beautiful. Great. So Josh, we got some Shiraz grape vines from Margaret River that we, we rescued. We got wind of them through the, uh, the builders that were building the terraces. Um, and we planted 30 vines uh, and all but one took. So they've been in the ground about six months. Having these established plants really makes an impact on the look of the place, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It makes it feel like the garden's been here for years. But really, it's only probably just over a year and a half old. So I think it has great character to the place balance and interest in the garden is achieved through a number of unusual edibles as well, like capers and purple okra. Scott also keeps four beehives to help with the job of pollination and of course for honey. 
So this is the honeymoon we pulled out, Josh, uh, just recently. So nice and dark. It's uh, got nice sweet notes with a bit of a bit of fennel sort of uh, finish because we had lots of wild fennel around the citrus. Um, the bees are just going really nuts on it. So um, it's just beautiful honey, and it's it's beautiful sight actually just cracking the lids. It's something that uh, I haven't really experienced before. Um, and just really appreciating the bees and their work. So. so another skill we've had to learn? Yeah, yeah. Lucky I've got some great friends that can teach me all this stuff. And you're making your own teas also? Yeah, we are, yeah. So we've got a whole lot of stuff drying here. We've been putting it all together. And this one that we're going to try today is lemongrass, uh, lemon verbena and gelatin wax. That's an interesting mix. It's nice and nice in this heat as well, a little bit of that honey in there. That's delicious. It's a really interesting mix of flavours with those herbs. Yeah, it's a good way for us to use everything in the garden and showcase it, um, and a good way to preserve it. So we dry it in the summer, and then we've got tea through the winter. I mean, it's amazing how much stuff that people do prune from their garden, herbs, and you know, some of the edible flowers that just go to compost. Yeah. I'm looking at what you've got here, and I'm thinking, I'm growing a lot of that, and it often does end up in compost. So it's a great way to use the material. Yeah, and we've uh, you know picked roses that we use for rose water. Um, and, and things like that. So we're trying to use all the flowers and everything in the garden and get ready for winter, really. So are you a chef first or a gardener first? So I grew up on a market garden in New Zealand and my family were uh, tomato farmers. Uh, so ever since I can remember, uh, there was produce around. Um, we live pretty much off our property. Um, and, and that's what I remember first. And I suppose that introduced me into chefing. And so, and I've been a chef for 20 odd years. And it's done a full circle back into the garden now, so it's, it's an evolution which um, I'm really enjoying. The true test for Scott is in the kitchen, where seasonal dishes will be prepared using as much from the garden as possible, and with a real focus on waste reduction. It's pretty much the dream, isn't it? I step outside, I can pick what I want and, and cook it. And I like to use like, almost like the nose to tail of a vegetable, so everything um, that that it grows with that I can eat, I'll cook and use it so we're not wasting anything. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Well, Scott, thank you so much. I feel really fortunate to be able to come here and check out behind the scenes and taste the produce before the place even opens. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than welcome. With a growing interest for people to feel connected to the story of what they're eating, Places like this demonstrate the viability of urban food gardens and the value that brings to a professional kitchen.